This week we started to read from uh, the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. And uh, I would like to focus once again this uh, reflection on the first reading. Bible scholars uh, point out that this was the oldest letter written by uh, Paul to a particular community which he had uh, previously uh, visited or evangelized. And we see, for example, that uh, in these letters, certain themes that reflect its uh, its status or its uh, its concerns the issues for example like uh, the second coming of Christ uh, or those who are called the ruly idol and many other other themes if you, you if we pay uh, attention to the tone of today's reading first reading it is as if paul was defending himself and his companions by reminding them the thessalonians that they worked day and night in order that they would not be a burden to anyone of those who received them in their community. In other words, their proclamation of the gospel to them was free of charge, that they did not take advantage of the community, even if they had the right to such support and compensation just as it is said in other uh, biblical passages that just as a laborer is worthy of his wage so they could have also asked for compensation for what they did yet they did not though uh, not named in the reading today according to scholars the accusers of Paul tried to discredit him after he left Thessalonica they tried to discredit him and his companions so Paul as a defense reminded them the Christian community of uh, the Thessalonians that he and his companions were not burden to them that they lived a virtuous life among them that he was like a father to them who cared for his children and who taught them to live a dignified life worthy of God's kingdom Another thing that Paul was uh, happy and proud about was the fact that the Thessalonians believed in their preaching and he rejoiced not because of that but the fact that it proved that the word proclaimed to them was the word of God and not merely of humans that the word of God has its power to convert that's the power to lead us to faith Paul is trying here to, sh to show the here the, the gratuity of God's good news that he proclaimed it not for profit's sake but out of love for Christ and for the salvation of people secondly Paul wanted the Thessalonians to realize 
the power of the Word of God. That indeed it is the Word that converts, that leads us to eternal life. And that is why with this conviction that every day, every Mass, every celebration, no, we still, we always have the Word proclaimed. I think it is good to be reminded again and again of this truth of the power of God's Word that converts and makes people lives fruitful at times we think that with uh, strategy plans that we are assured of successful projects in our pastoral pastoral life and activities I'm not belittling the, our plannings our strategies we should plan as part of our seriousness in carrying out our task. It is necessary that we reflect and plan our, uh, our strategies in proclaiming and attaining our goals for the kingdom. But we should also be open and humble and remind ourselves that is it is God's word and grace that make our projects our plans and our strategies fruitful and we are reminded once again of our also of our vocation that it is not just because of our own efforts only that we can respond truly and generously to God. It is also because of God's grace. So let us always, as we try our best to respond to God, allow also His, God, His grace, His word to inspire us, to strengthen us, to respond to his call and may the word of god be our light our strength especially as members of the society of the divine word let the word of god be our light and our life amen <laughs>